The city is probably the oldest, most enduring invention of our civilization. The words are interchangeable. Civilization, civil, civic, city. Cities evolve over time. They respond to crises. And historically, they emerge from crises stronger than ever before. So what are the future trends for cities? And what are the lessons of history? Hello, I'm Su Fujimoto, based in Tokyo and Paris. But of course, yeah, in this uh, 10, 11 month, I couldn't be in Paris or any other places than Tokyo, so I'm staying in Tokyo. And uh, yeah, I have an office in Tokyo and Paris and doing uh, various uh, different types of the project, from the small things to the larger things and from the private house to the cultural programs and the housing and urban project. Anyway, uh, yeah, today i like to talk about the topic I have been really thinking about as a core of the architecture thinking. It is between nature and architecture. Because uh, my personal background I was born and grown up in Hokkaido, in the northern island of Japan, and it's like a beautiful nature field. So I was praying around in the forest in my childhood days and praying around in the nature. So I was growing up with the nature. And then when I uh, entered to university, I moved to Tokyo. But the city of Tokyo is, of course, it is quite artificial and it is quite crowded and messy, but still I found out, it was kind of a nice surprise, but I found out an expected similarity between the forest where I was praying around in my childhood days and the city of Tokyo, because both of them are made by many, many small things. And it is, both of them has like a, kind of the positive complexities to protect people by such a small scales, like a human scales. So in, when I'm in Tokyo, especially in the small alley, then I feel I'm in the middle of the artificial forest because I am surrounded by many small houses, many yeah, bicycles and signage and uh, electricity cables, all of those tiny things and the various different scales are creating kind of the sheltering uh, spaces, which is very similar for me, similar to the forest in Hokkaido. And then after I found out such a strange, unexpected similarity, then I surprised and then I thought about how, why not we can integrate architectural or artificial uh, environment and natural environment together to create the better living environment. That was the very, very starting point of my uh, architecture thinking relating to nature and architecture. And of course, the, how to say, visually, both of them are so different, but the structure behind it or order or rules behind it had some kind of similarity. That was a very important point. So then after that, I tried to understand such a uh, urban or natural environment, not only by the visual uh, surfaces, but also uh, by how it is made, how it is created, and what kind of the, the relationships uh, each pieces of those environment relates to each other to create those uh, atmospheres. And then starting point was something like that, to think about nature and architecture. But if you think about the nature and architecture, then it, it, it starts to expand our thinkings to, for example, to the relationship between inside and outside. Inside is rather more 
to the architecture space and the outside is nature field. But then we can uh, flip it, switch it inside outside to bring the nature into architecture and then to expose the architecture to the, net, to the outside nature or the simplicity and complexity, order and uh, chaos and straightness and softness and different scales, transition of the different scales from the tiny leaves the coffee cup, tables, furniture, tree branches, and architectural scales, landscaping scales, and the urban scales, and, and so on. So the relationship between nature and architecture, the contrast and similarity, and furthermore relationships, could be like uh, the starting point to think about any, every different types of the important architecture topics inside and outside and simplicity, complexity, order, disorder. All of those things are like a, has the same, same uh, root, like the relationship between nature and architecture. So today I will show a few projects, but all of those projects has uh, those topics, not only about such a physical nature and physical architectures, but sometimes it is really conceptual and sometimes it really depends on the activities of the people and the interaction between the people and the space or and to the nature and, and so on. And then at the end, I am thinking to extend those uh, good relationships between nature and architecture to the urban environmental design because yeah that is kind of integrating everything not only architecture not only street not only the human uh, relationships it is like uh, the totality of our living environment so that, that's uh, that's my intention Anyway, yeah, let's start. So this is the, the, the first project, the Serpentine Pavilion 2013. That was like a really, really big, big thing for me. And yeah, as you, as you can see, this is like a, the, the architectural cloud in the, in the middle of the park and in front of the Serpentine Gallery. And it is surrounded by such a beautiful greens it's made by really artificial materials, steel, steel bars, straight, and then 90 degrees grids. So material is super artificial. The odor, the way it is assembled is really artificial uh, odor. But finally, what was made is like a, like a cloud. And it has uh, the complexity and then it, it has also the scales, the diversity of the scales from the two centimeter thinness of the steel bar to the 40 centimeter uh, to the scales of the, the stepping and the seatings. And then of course, architectural scales and expanding more as the landscaping scales. And then these steps is creating the field for people to choose wherever they feel comfortable or it is a place where people can choose uh, to move around as they like it is like um, the place without fixed functions but it is a place of open functions inspire people and interact with the peoples to create uh, enormous a lot of different functions depends on how people likes to uh, interact with the space. So in, in that meaning, this is like a trial to create something beyond the normal functional buildings, but open up the place more freely to the people and create the, the field for the interaction between the people's behaviors and the place. In that sense, I feel this place, after experiencing 
uh, during the opening days after experiencing, I felt this is this place is rather similar to a place in the middle of the forest because in the forest there are no any specific functions, but you can just find your own place to uh, to sit or to walk around or to climb up the trees. You can just how to say you, you get get an inspiration from the environment of the forest, and then you you start to play. And in this field of the Southern Gallery, all the space is like uh, the cloud of the, the steps and the different brightness and different densities of uh, enclosure. And then those uh, environmental situation inspire people and get a lot of information. And then people start to play and start to interact. And then this transparency is, is also quite like amazing because there are no specific walls for this pavilion, no specific windows, just the, the gradation of the transparencies. And it means you feel some, some place, you feel more exposed to the green surroundings because it is transparent for you. But if you look to the different directions, then the densities of the frames are creating like uh, the fog. And then suddenly it is more like a, not like a wall, but more enclosure to protect you. So if you move around, then the transparencies and the layering of the frames and the densities of the space are always changing according to your movement. It means you, you feel you are really interact, interact, interacting with the space and your movement as well. That is why uh, people could get such a, I would say, interactive inspirations. And yeah, again, in the forest, no, there are no walls, no windows, but if you move around, you, you feel you are more surrounded by many uh, large trees, then you feel we are really protected like a wall. But if you walk into a rather open place, then it's, it's rather more open and transparent and so on. So again, even if it is made by such a straight lines and uh, steel materials and such a rigid uh, order of the geometries, but still the experience of the people are rather close to the experience in the forest. That is, I think, amazing things of the architecture design because using different materials, different methods and different order, but still we can create the similar environment between architecture and the nature and inspire a lot of people to just to walk up and then coming down but it's 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 like a yeah it's like a playful playful field and yeah even such a straight line people feel it's really soft in a sense that is yeah even myself was really surprised it looks like a virtual in a sense but it is real and then if you start to sit or climb up then it is real but if you step back then it's it's quite airy airy or something so again i like to say yeah we can normally we are thinking about those kind of the differences or contrast straightness and softness simplicity and complexity and uh, inside and outside dividing everything clearly but I think it is much more, how to say, the richer experience to integrate such a splitted ones together, cre feeling such a gradient differences between black and white or simple and complex. And that is kind of a amazing point of architecture design. We can, we can, we can create both of them. We can create simple and complex things. We can create uh, soft and solid things. And we can create inside and outside together in one architecture experiences. So that's, that's 
that's very interesting things. And then, yeah, this is the second project is the Labre Blanc in French, the white tree in Montpellier in France. Of course, as you know, the Montpellier is the city of Mediterranean climate. So yeah, even in February, they can come out to the open terrace to have a lunch. That is really wonderful uh, lifestyle and a wonderful climate. And then for the local people, they have been doing those wonderful lifestyles for uh, many, many years and hundreds of years. So I like to respect such a beautiful climate conditions and such a wonderful lifestyle. And even if I create the contemporary architecture and one of the tallest buildings in these regions, I like to respect, I like to uh, adapt, I like to reinvent such a traditional lifestyle in a contemporary uh, architecture. And then finally, as a result, yeah, this is yeah, our answer to have simply to have a lot of balconies sticking out, large, large balconies sticking out, around 200 balconies popping up out and uh, 100 shadings popping out. And then finally, it looks like a, yeah, it looks like a pineapple or pine cones, but it's quite organic, I mean. And interesting things is, yeah, this is a view from the, from the one of the terrace. And of course, this largeness, openness of the terrace is wonderful. But amazing point is we can feel many neighbors' terraces above or below together. Of course, proper distances, so keeping the privacy, but uh, still you can have a communication or you can feel we are living together in this neighborhood or in this uh, vertical three-dimensional community. And that is quite amazing things because normally the housing, contemporary housing is like a creating a, such a strong privacy. So after entering to the entrance, then every uh, unit is strictly divided. Then as a result, we are probably lost such a feelings of the relationships between the neighbors, like a community feelings. But in this case, after entering to your house, then again on the terrace, you can have the proper relationships of the community again as an exterior of these, these housing buildings. And you can have a communications or you can feel we are living together or you are not alone. And this is, I think, very uh, important things in this 21st century to recreate the feelings of the, the, re, the people are relating to each other, living together, while of course keeping the, their privacies. And how to create those kind of the proper relationships, on one hand separated, but on the other hand uh, connected separation and connection together, creating those kind of the in-between situation by the proper architecture design will help to create such a wonderful uh, living environment as, uh, as a community. And that is the point I'm, I'm really proud of it. So those kind of the three dimensional terraces also there, but you can see how, yeah, many, many terraces are coming together, creating their own places, but at the same time, it is like a the vertical uh, city, but not city, it's more like a vertical living environment, or uh, as the name of these buildings, all the people are living in one trees, but all the branches are like, open so they feel they are living together and the people living in the surrounding areas also could feel when they see it then this is the place where people are openly living there and they are how to say part of their 
surrounding community. So connecting the communities to the architectures through the real life uh, of the people. And then of course, this life is open to this beautiful nature, beautiful climate, and respecting the whole history and the climate conditions. So in that sense, the connecting to the history as well, as well as connecting to the, to the neighborhood. And in, uh, I think the architecture from this, of this age could have such a interactive relationships and creating such a proper in-between situations half open, half protected, half connected, and then half uh, separated. And those, like the mixtures of the opposite situations, straightness, softness, artificial, natural, and simplicity, complexity. Between those opposite situations, we can create such a uh, wonderful mixtures and the wonderful in-between situations where people can uh, properly choose their own places and their own situations. And then finally, this is now the landmark of this area because this is showing how wonderful the life in Montpellier is. Enjoying the whole weather, communicating with the neighbors, and openly be proud of their life and their place and uh, proud of Montpellier. So that is why this is the, the landmark. Not because of the shapes, but because of how they are showing uh, their life in a, in a good pride. I have two projects recently one is built in Japan and one is ongoing in, in Japan. And both of them is really like a try to reinvent the, the relationship between the city and buildings and the, each different programs. This is the Uniqlo Park. Uh, as you know, the shop of Uniqlo, the fashion brand. But as you can see, this this is a three-story buildings, but as you can see, all the roof is like a like a steps, stairs, and coming down to the ground level. It means it is open to the public. And then most of the stairs has such a large slides and the boulderings and the playground uh, items. So most of the all of the, the rooftop is like an open park. It is not the, how to say, rooftop. It's like a stepping rooftop. So from the ground level, from the public access, the old surface is, is like a, the, the playground. And why they have a public park on the shop? That is, I think, quite like a ambitious and proper ambitious ambitions of the Uniqlo company because they thought, of course, if they like to make super efficient shop, then just a simple box and uh, maximum floor areas in a regular shape and so on, something like that. That has been maybe we can say 20th century uh, efficient systems, but they thought now 21st century, this is not the way to do the, uh, those kind of the, the retail shop. They like to, how to say, enrich not only their shops, but also all the surrounding environment, surrounding areas. And then how to bring the people and how to welcome the people and how to make people enjoy to be here all around the surroundings. And then the answer is to create such an open park then children likes to go to the park, not to go, not necessarily to go to the shops, but just to go to the park or just to go come to this surrounding neighborhood. And then if the value 
or experience of the surrounding neighborhood is increased, then as a result, the value of the shops will be increased. So those kind of the interleaning the relationships or interactive relationships, not like a enclosed uh, efficient systems, but you know, open and creating a proper relationships and providing a, a public uh, open areas to enrich the whole surroundings together with the, the shop. That is the, the very simple strategy. And of course, this is a quite like a big challenge, but as a result, as you can see, all the surfaces are full of the people and kids uh, don't like to leave and, until the end of the day. And, and, and so then finally, as a result, it, it is like a, a quite uh, specific uh, destinations uh, for, for, for the people. So that was a very, very big success. And then in here, so we can, we can say, it is like a breaking the boundaries. As I, as I said, not like a making an interior shop, not making just a exterior parts, but the integrating, mixing them uh, to each other. And then creating the slides, uh, but it is also uh, like the circulation in a sense. And it's, it's part of the, the park landscaping, but it's part of the, the building. And also, of course, the oven, part of the oven design. So those kind of the go beyond the boundaries or go, uh, go into the in-between situation of different uh, things and melting them together. So in here, we don't have so many, of course we have some trees, and, but we don't have many uh, natures. So in the meaning of the physical nature and architecture relationships, it is not very, how to say, uh, it doesn't have so many uh, interactive relationships between the physical nature and physical architectures. But thinking about the relationships between the city, architecture, and landscaping, or the, beyond the boundaries of the playground and the stairs and the activities of the different types of the people and the shops, then the same thinkings to go beyond such a the divided categories or divided situations. It is, yeah, kind of like a mountain in a sense, play mountains, but at the same time, it is like a shops and they could be the auditorium. If they like to do the event, then all those seatings are, could be the auditorium seat, seatings. So in, in that meetings, the architecture and the programs and the division of the programs, division of the architecture and city and different functions are now melting together. And we can find the new frontier to find out something between those different things, shop and park and city and landscaping and stairs and the slides and architecture and the hills and so on. So those, this is such, such kind of the trial. And then this is the last project I, I showed today. It is really uh, like a, the recent project. It is a the high rise, super high rise project in Tokyo, in the middle of the Tokyo, next to the Tokyo train station. It is quite like a prestigious place. And then the the developer, the Mitsubishi uh, real estate uh, company is now planning the 390 meter uh, high rise buildings. The office place, but the upper part we have uh, hotels and some other programs, the mixtures of the programs. And then they asked me to design this crown, the top part, the crown part of this high rise as a collaboration with uh, Mitsubishi Jisho Sekkei, uh, the company. And then we discussed a lot about what is the new typology of the high-rise buildings and how we can extend the urban experience 
into such a high rise because normally the high rise is more like a how to say closed and uh, so separated from the ground level urban activities it's more like a object normally but we try to make such a link and try to create the new urban uh, place floating above the 300 meter high and finally the answer is you can see this in the middle of the high rise you can see a uh, quite open place rather hilly open up this is is a like more zoom in daytime the high rise is splitted and we can have like a huge hill hill-like space inserting such a hill-like space in the middle of the the high rise which is the place of course where the hotel lobby is there but where different programs also are around there so we are expecting it is like a the extended or new type of the the urban plaza or urban place where people come together meet together with the different people and yeah full of different types of the urban activities and this is a trial and then of course because it is quite like a open from the exteriors even from the ground level people can recognize wow there are some some something is floating there it looks like the urban open up to the urban situation so we like to make a link from the ground level to the 300 meter high and also from above people can also look down to to make the interactive link and also when yeah, this is a more zoom in and then this is a view of the floating uh, hill like a garden hill large huge garden hills in the sky it's quite like a like a slopey and uh, the upper part is open to the sky so it's like a semi outdoor space we can we are having the glass partitions to block the the wind but the it is open to the sky so that is why we have the trees and we can have a greens but still it is in the middle of the the high-rise building so it is like a half architecture space and a half uh, open park space and half landscape and uh, also it is like a, the urban plaza so the the division between architecture landscape and inside outside city the buildings are uh, melting uh, to each other to create such a new categories of the place for the people because those division of the categories is not for the people anymore division by the functions division of inside and outside division of the different typologies are not for the people anymore so we try to create such a place for the people and melting them different categories different meanings and different typologies together to create such a open hill above the sky and that is quite like a yeah, huge challenge structurally technically of course but if we can create such a place for the people in the upper part of the high-rise buildings then we can extend the city or urban design more vertically and create such a three-dimensional city in the future and of course in the future we can have like a drone for the people like a drone taxi and so on then the accessibilities and the the movement between different places vertically could be drastically changed and then the meaning of those floating urban places but still relating to the ground level is, is very getting very important i think so that's why uh, we are proposing this and collaborating with those uh, great developer and the design firm to to realize it but again 
Yeah, this is the end of the, the presentation. So I like to say, of course, nature, architecture, physically, is quite exciting challenges, how we can integrate them, because it relates to my uh, personal background, half in Hokkaido, nature field, and half in Tokyo. But we can extend this uh, concept of between nature and architecture beyond the physical greens and the physical architectures, getting more conceptual or expand the, the thinkings more and more to, for example, the, such a basic things of in, inside and outside, simplicity, complexity, and city, architecture, landscape, hill, and playground, and huge staircases. And also we can create such a, how to say, good relationships between people and people and people and neighborhood to go beyond such a boundaries of the privacy or boundaries of architecture itself in between spaces inside and outside, then like at the Montpellier balconies, not only as like at the experience of the one balconies, but we create, well, we recreate such a community feelings and those community feelings, so interactive relationships of the people and people or people and the, the neighbors uh, must be kind of the, the way the future city is created. And then the Uniqlo Park, and then the last one, the high-rise buildings, are also relating to those kind of the interactive relationships, not like, a, how to say, one building uh, designed for themselves independently, but more like open up the buildings to make interactive relationships to the surroundings or to the, the urban situations below. And then we can enrich the whole living environment of us much, much more. This is like a, the perception of the architecture as a totality, not only just one building, not only just one space, but also integrating the surrounding conditions, nature surroundings, urban surroundings, and increasing the whole value of all the neighbors or all the related situations, then as a totality, then the independent value of the independent architectures could be also increased. And finally, I think those kind of the thinkings of the totality would change the, the urban uh, situations, more getting more diverse, getting more interactive and interrelationed. And like, uh, yeah, the city could be like the future forest, the place of diversity and a place for the people. Thank you very much. Thank you.